I went to Apollo. I thought, yo, I made it, baby. But nah, I didn't get no record deal after that. How do you treat the people that were walking away from you a year ago, like Warner Brothers? How the hell am I supposed to catch a groove when it's somebody new in my face every couple of months? Now, how did you and Will meet? Oh, His team no. reached out, uh, would I be up for collaboration? I was like, well, hell yeah, I'd be up for collaboration. <laughs> Who would people be surprised to hear that you're friends with? Oh, nah. <laughs> Hey, family, it's Carlos Watson. We're always bringing you the most interesting people from around the globe. This year, one of the things that really took off was TikTok, and maybe the most surprising star was the singer, Jason Derulo. Now, many of you have known and loved Jason's music for years, but over the last couple of years, he was a little bit quiet, and all of a sudden with TikTok, boom, he's become one of the biggest stars again. Very intimate, very interesting conversation with South Florida's own Jason Derulo. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Hey, Jason, good to see you again. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? Good. How you doing, man? Really good. Can't complain. Living the dream. You know what? Uh, I don't know if I ever told you. You may remember that you came and did Ozzy Fest for me back in the day in Central Park when we first started, and I appreciate that. Tell me about the last year, because interesting to me, I felt like you were maybe in not as good a spot in your career a year ago, and it felt like maybe the limelight had gotten away from you, and all of a sudden, it feels like fresh air has come at you. A, is that right? And B, uh, given that, like, how do you treat the people that were walking away from you a year ago, like Warner Brothers? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I was definitely in a different, a totally different place. I was on Warner Brothers for 12 years, and through that process, I've gone through four different regimes, and four different staffs have, have come in throughout my career. Talk dirty to me. Like, how the hell am I supposed to catch a groove when it's somebody new in my face every every couple of months? Like, it's, it's crazy. And then, when a new regime comes in, to build a name for yourself as an executive, you have to sign new things. So, what their aim is, is to find, like, who's the next guy? Who's the next big thing? Where I'm over here, like, I need attention to detail. I need, you know, things done the right way. And their head headspace is in something totally different. But your boy been keeping the lights on for, for 10 years, but you got to pay attention to this. So it became a very toxic situation. And then finally was like, I, I, I got to let me go. You don't want me. I don't want you. Like, what are we doing? So I was able to get out of my deal. Savage love. There's somebody, there's somebody break your heart. Looking like an angel, but you're savage. And damn, like what crazy whirlwind it has been, you know, in the last year. And I think it's because of a lot of different situations. Also, you know, myself just being at home, you know, I felt like everything was recalibrated, me being in my own space. For so many years, I've just been kind of on the road, and I think I traveled more than any other artist in the industry. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, a whole recalibration has been done in my mind, and I've been able to flourish, and thanks to God. TikTok before COVID or, or no? No, not at all. So um, I started in March and I started by doing one challenge and I was like, oh, this is fun. And then I just caught the bug, man. And I just, it was like one of the things that kind of got me through this whole situation. You know, I, I just love being creative. You know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit down and watch TV or play too many video games. So like when I'm creating is when I'm at my happiest. Let me take you this How did you know that it was gonna take off or did you not know you literally were just having fun? Because when I got on TikTok, you were one of the first people I started seeing a lot and I felt like you were one of those people who was like at the gold rush early before everybody else. You know what, uh, definitely that's the case. I, I did have a feeling that it was gonna be like the next big thing, but I didn't know that I was gonna blow up the way I did. I think it has a lot to do with it being very level playing field. It's an app where if you got good content, you're gonna be lit. No matter if you're somebody that's known or somebody that's unknown, anybody can be popping on, on the app. Now, how big a business is it compared to something like YouTube or Instagram or what have you? Is TikTok as good a business yet as those other 
ones. I think it's a bigger business right now. It's the hottest new kid in town, right? And the viewership can be so high. You know, I mean, I have videos that have hundreds of millions of views. So if you're a big brand in the world and you want your brand to be seen, I mean, TikTok is where you're going because it's 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 the hot, new hot. Interesting. And how much of a businessman are you? Because I know some artists love the business part of it. Some people are like, you know what? I've got people for that. Where are you? I'm a businessman through and through. So everything that I do is for the is for building the brand. And me building my brand is so that I can continue to have tentacles that are outside of what my main source of income is, which is music, right? But for me, I have 13 businesses now. Um, one being, uh, I was the biggest investor in Catch LA. I have a company called Rumble Boxing. We have 26 locations across the country. Vodka that just was released is called Bedlam Vodka. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Now, what do you call your breakthrough? Like, in your mind, what was your breakthrough? Was it the piece at the Apollo? Was it one of your first songs? When did you, in your mind, go from something that you loved and were obsessed with to something that you were going to make money at and you were going to be a professional, you were going to be someone people knew? You know what? I don't think I had just one breakthrough moment. And I think... For me, every moment like that was something that helped propel me. The Apollo moment, I thought when I won the Apollo, I thought, yo, I made it, baby. But nah, I didn't get no record deal after that. So like when you see you know, all these wonderful singers that come on these television shows and they win the whole season, I mean, how many, how many, uh, Celebrities do we do we know from The Voice? You know, we don't we don't know anybody that's come off The Voice. American Idol is, is probably you know a, a, a few from early on, but um, just because you win one of these shows does not guarantee you a spot or a seat at the table. You know, you still got to keep grinding. I mean, that's that's still the beginning. It's the beginning of something, but it's still the beginning. Right, right. All right. Now, 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 one of the things I'm always curious about is what happens when one member of the family blows up. Because I can tell you're close to your friends and family, and, and something tells me you got a tight knit crew. What do your parents do? Were they into music, and you're like the second generation, or were you the first one to break through and really set this path? So my uncle was James Brunt, not Spun. Nah, no music in my family, man. I, I just kind of came out of nowhere, and I was just instantly obsessed with music at a very early age. My mom uh, was an immigration officer. My dad uh, was an import-export business, so he had his own business. You know, they would play music in the house, but I mean, that's, that's as far as it went. And what happens when one person in that crew becomes a household name, people recognize him, he's got extra money. What is that like? What's that dynamic been like for you? For me, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing, man. Um, it, the positive side is the fact that I can uplift a lot of my family members. So I work with a lot of my family members. So, you know, it's just so many jobs that I can give to the people that are closest to me. And that's that's been incredible. But, you know, it's also tough sometimes, like going to uh, like a family reunion or a family get together and um, the, the picture thing, I just don't like it. Um, but I do it, but I don't like it. So like I do it every single day of my life, right? So when, I, when I'm going to a family get together, it's not really what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but I, but I get it. And where do you get good advice from? Like who's in your kitchen cabinet? Who's your, who's your rabbi? Who's your consulary? Who, who's, who's giving you good advice? Definitely my manager, Frank. He's been my manager since I was 12 years old. And uh, just a really smart guy. And, and I was definitely lucky to have him, you know, from an early age, I was able to learn the ins and outs of the music industry and just make the best decisions for myself because I was just informed. Even till, till this day, if I'm gonna make an investment on something, I'm definitely passing it through him. And he'll, he'll always give me what he thinks uh, uh, is the best decision. So look forward for me. Uh, five years out, 10 years out, what should I expect to see? You know, I honestly want to just continue on the same path of growth, you know, both in music, but also from an entrepreneurial standpoint. I definitely want to be dabbling, dabbling much more in the film and TV space. I'm developing a, a television show now with uh, Will Smith's team, uh, Westbrook. 
which I'm really excited about. I don't know if you can if you can tell, but you know, even even when I'm doing TikToks, you know, I make a full production and it just almost feel like these small blips of, of a movie, man. So I think my path is more so on the creation side and creating an entire franchise, a project myself and, and doing it that way. Wait, now how did you and Will meet? How did you guys come across each other? His team reached out and they were, you know, saying how they enjoyed what I was doing online and would I be up for collaboration? I was like, well, hell yeah, I'd be up for collaboration. <laughs> you know, Will's being one of my inspirations, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we, we started off with one video and the, the world the world loved it, man. So we just continued, you know, doing more and more videos and it just became an, an incredible situation where, you know, we were able to collaborate all the time. I think Will Smith did it best. You know, if I had to model my career after anybody, he's just done such an incredible job of, you know, taking what he built as a musician and totally making a complete flip into, you know, one of the biggest and greatest actors in the world. Give somebody some advice on dreaming fearlessly, Jason, because you've been blessed in that you've dreamed fearlessly, but you've also brought it alive. I bet you, whether it's through TikTok or other things, you meet so many people who struggle to dream in a bold way, in a fearless way, and then bring it alive. What's the best advice you would give people about how to dream fearlessly and bring your dreams alive? I think <clears throat> the best advice is to really decide what you love to do most in life and to go after that at the highest level. Because it's so easy to, to work hard at the things that you love to do, right? So if you choose the thing that you are most obsessed with and you and you spend all your time and energy into that, you're way more likely to be successful at that. You'll lead a much more happy life. I mean, it's, it's literally that simple. And I think that life is is basically <laughs> it's, that's what all it's about. It's about doing the things that you love to do. I want to play a little game with you that I call Rapid Fire. I want to hit you with a couple of things. I want your immediate reaction. Give me a name of a celebrity that people would be surprised to hear that you're friends with them. I think people would be surprised to hear that I'm, I'm uh, friends with Katy Perry. We have a mutual friend and um, yeah, we just have like this, this friend group and like whenever we're doing something uh, big, we, we all get together. Most interesting country you've ever been to? Most interesting? I gotta say that's that's Dubai because it's just it's just the, the future. You know, they're just living in the future. Who's your favorite comedian? I gotta say Kevin Hart is, is my favorite. Favorite book? Favorite book's probably The Secret. Best advice you've either given or gotten when it comes to love? I be giving mad advice on love like I'm the love doctor. So I'm, I think the greatest advice is to to just be transparent, just to to talk things out and to try to see the other person's side and not just kind of stick to your guns and try to think about like where they're coming from. I think that's that's probably the, the, the greatest gift. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would you want to have dinner with? Michael Jackson, for sure. Mike was the sole reason I started singing and dancing in the first place. I was four years old and I saw Mike on TV for the first time and I was like, yo, this is who I want to be. That's what started this entire thing, man. It inspired this obsession uh, with music and creation and entertainment. Thank you for doing this, man. I really appreciate it and, uh, and continued success. Thank you, man. Thank you for the interview. It was, it was phenomenal, man. Appreciate you. Hey, hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jason. I met him a few years ago when he performed at Ozzy Fest, the Summer Music and Ideas Festival that I'm a part of. A really interesting entrepreneur in evolution. Wish him the very best as he starts to work with Will Smith and others. And we'll be curious to see whether or not he remains on the music scene following his hero, Michael Jackson, or whether, candidly, he becomes a businessman full-time. We'll see. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this show. I hope you're enjoying this series. Remember that you can subscribe. You can always tell people about it. And we've got a wonderful podcast that often gives you an extended conversation. I'll see you soon. Thank you.